Hi students, these notes are over rate of change, which basically is just looking a little bit more in depth at the slope. So basically, rate of change is really just the slope with units added. Units really give the slope meaning. So what do the what does the change in y represent? What does the change in x represent? What does this mean for my situation? So we have a couple examples here. Here's the first example. Um, elevator ride. The x-axis has time in seconds. The y-axis has the floor number. And it looks like our graph is moving down from left to right. So it looks like at time zero, the elevator is on the 20th floor. And then it keeps going down as the time moves on until after 20 seconds, it's at floor zero, or I guess the ground floor or the basement, whatever you want to call that. So let's go ahead and answer some of these questions. The first one says, what is the scale for the domain? Remember, domain are my x values. The scale, scale means what it's counting by. Like, remember when y'all did skip counting when y'all were little? That's what it's asking. So if I look at the x-axis, 2, 4, 6, 8, it's counting by 2s. What's the scale for the range? Now we're looking at the y values, and they're counting by 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So when the scales are not the same, which they aren't here, if you were to physically count the rise and the run for your slope, you would get it wrong if you were just counting the spaces and not counting how much each space represents. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's go ahead and find the slope, but first we need to find two ordered pairs. So remember when you choose ordered pairs to find the slope, if you don't already have points um, kind of located for you, you want to choose some points on your line that are at intersections. So like this would be a good point. Uh, let's see, this would be a good point. There's a lot of them. This would be a good point. This would be a good point. There's a lot on here. But we just need to pick two. So I'm going to go with those first two that I found. Um, that first one was 14, 6. Remember, the x value goes first. I'm going to write that down here. 14, 6. And then the second point was 10, 10. It's kind of hard to see my graph, so I'm rewriting it over here as well. Okay, so we're going to use those two points to find the slope using that slope formula. So remember the slope formula. We subtract our y's on the top. Our two y values are 6 and 10. So we've got x, y, x, y. I'm going to do 10 minus 6 in my top. So I did 10 minus 6. For my x's in the denominator, I need to subtract in the same way, so I'm going to do 10 minus 14. And when I simplify, 10 minus 6 is 4, 10 minus 14 is negative 4, and that simplifies to a negative 1. So this is my slope. Now, I want to consider the units, okay? So the units are really what's going to make it my rate of change. So remember that the change in y is on the top. So the change in my y values, those are my floor numbers. So it's floor numbers on the top, part of my fraction, over my x values, or my change in x, my run in the bottom, that is my time in seconds. So floor number per seconds. And so what this means for my, my rate of change, this means that my elevator is going down, that's why we have a negative slope, down one floor per second. If I put all of that together, actually let me write it out in, uh, in words. Right, right here. It goes down one floor 
every second. And so now I have a little bit more meaning to my slope. This right here is my slope with units, my rate of change. So that's really what we're looking at here. We're trying to find meaning from our slope. All right, let's look at a, another, a couple other really important parts of our graph. The first part is the y-intercept. So remember, the y-intercept is where your graph crosses the y-axis. Our graph cross, crosses the y-axis right here at 20, okay? And the coordinates of that point are 0, 20. So that is my y-intercept. And is that 20? Yes, that's 20. And um, what that indicates is that is where the elevator started. It started on the 20th floor at time zero. Started at floor 20. Okay, so whenever you have these real world situations, try to figure out what these represent. The x-intercept that's where your graph crosses the x-axis. And our graph crosses the x-axis here at 20, 0. So this is the amount of time, 20 seconds, at the 0 floor. So that means it took 20 seconds to go to floor 0. 20 seconds to go down to floor zero. All right, so those are the meanings of our graph. But the important part here is this rate of change, down one floor every second. So if I was to look at the rise and run, okay, let's go back to that for just a second. So I know some of us like to find the slope by counting, by making our little triangle, right? Well, if I count my rise, I've got four. And if I count my run, I've got two. And I'm talking about spaces here. Well, rise over run, or four divided by two, gives me two, not one. So that means I did it wrong. And this is where the scale comes in. For the y values, I am counting by one. So that four is good. But for the x values, I'm counting by two. So it's really two, four, my run is really four. And four over four gives me that one that I need. And of course it's negative. So if you're, if you're counting the physical little triangle rise and run, make sure you're counting by the scale. Be real careful there. All right, here's your second example. We've got saving money. On the x-axis we have time and weeks. On the y-axis we have the amount of money in dollars. So the first one says, what is the scale for the domain? That's our x-axis. It looks like it's counting by ones. That's easy for us. The scale for the range, that's the y values. Now, every tenth uh, dollar is labeled how every, every line equals five. So we've got five, 10, and then we have 15. So every one of these lines equals five more. So this scale is actually five. If you put 10, be careful, you're not, you're looking at the, what does each line represent? So because our scales are different, I need to be really careful if I'm using my triangle to figure out the slope. Okay, what two order pairs can you use to find the slope? Remember, just choose two that are good. And it looks like most of these are pretty good. I'm just gonna choose that guy and this guy right here. So that first one is 3, 45. And I'll rewrite that here. And that second point is 6, 60. So if I use my formula with the two coordinates, two sets of coordinates, I'll definitely always get the right slope. So let's go ahead and do that. My y values are 45 and 60. I'm gonna do 60 minus 45 in my top. Make sure you're always putting your y's on the top. 
and then to subtract in the same direction for my x's in the bottom I'm going to do 6 minus 3 all right let's simplify 60 minus 45 is 15 6 minus 3 is 3 and that simplifies to 5 so 5 is my slope now to make it rate of change we've got to add units to that so the rise my y values which is on top that's money and then my run is weeks so this means five dollars per week so let's go ahead and write that out and that would actually be my rate of change I write it up here and it looks like it's going up because it's positive so um, up or increasing five dollars per week and this is my rate of change now if I was to look at the triangle let's look at that on our graph and just see how we would count my y values remember those are counting by fives so I've got three spaces each are five 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 ten fifteen my rise is 15, not 3. Be careful. My run is counting by 1, so I can just count 1, 2, 3. And then I'd put my rise over my run, 15 over 3, and that would still simplify to 5. So that's how I would do that. Be real careful there. All right, for my y-intercept, that's where my graph crosses the y-axis. That's 30. So the coordinates are 0, 30. And what does this mean? This means at week zero, there were $30. So had zero, sorry, had, a, or we started with $30. Okay, now let's take a look at our X intercept. And that's where our graph crosses the X axis. And oh, I can't tell. Now what I could do is I could extend my line, right? We could make a little guess. We could actually use the slope. Um, if my y-intercept is at 30, I'm going to go to the left down $5 every week, right? So if I, go, if I have to go down $5 every week to get to $0, I'm going to go down and over six times, which means that's six weeks before. So this point over here that's off my page is really going to be negative six zero. My x-intercept is negative six zero. And what that means, that means I had zero dollars six weeks before we started saving. Um, had or no money, zero dollars six weeks before we started saving. Whoops. Okay. All right. So there's that. Remember the, the focus of all this though is the rate of change and what does it mean?